Hello everybody, my name is Brent Johnson and I'm with Heartfield Automation. Last week we created our very first servo motor pro project in Automation Studio and we were actually able to get that servo motor spinning. It was super exciting. This week we're going to take that to the next step and we're going to add a, additional hardware. The hardware I want to add is a PhD ESU electric actuator. We're going to tie our servo motor and gear head into that and we're going to actually move the stage on this actuator back and forth depending on which sensor is true. All right, let's hop into the program and get started. All right guys, here we are in the programming. This is where we left off a couple of weeks ago on the motion program. So if we go ahead and we can double click on the main program in logical view, and you'll see that the program that we copied and pasted from the help file is right here. I haven't made any changes. The other thing you'll notice is the variables are still in there that we created from the help file as well. What I wanna do is we're gonna add a couple of new variables. Since we're gonna do a case statement today what we're going to do is i'm going to make a, a new variable which is an integer and i'm going to name that state motion so go ahead and right click in the white space click add variable and let's name that state motion <clears throat> and we want that to be an integer so that's int go ahead and hit enter and then i'm going to also have two more variables it's going, those are going to be our sensors that's going to be the booleans that we've used before in other projects so go ahead and hit add variable, then type in sensor one. <clears throat> we'll have that be a Boolean. And then do add variable sensor two, and that will be a Boolean. And then you can go ahead and hit save all and close out of there. <clears throat> Next, what I wanna do is we're gonna just make some comments. Commenting is really important in a program. It makes it easy to read for others and easy to read for yourself. In order to, to do a comment, you wanna do two forward slashes and then whatever you want it to say. It's not gonna be read by the controller. It's just something that makes it easy for you to read. So this is just gonna be set it axis par basic parameters. And then I do want to change this position. We're going to, I want to change this to zero for now. Everything else we can leave. We're going to have our velocity at 10. We're going to have our acceleration at 50 and deceleration at 50. So that's in the initialization of this. When the, when the program or the controller powers on, it's going to read this set of instructions once and only once. Then we're going to go to the cyclic. This is where it's constantly looking for more. It's always monitoring this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make a comment right here and I'm going to say this is setting up the axis variable pointers. Set up axis variable pointers. That's what that is going on right there. And then I'm going to, this bottom part, this is the actual function block that we're going to be calling. I want to call this when we're done writing our entire program. So right now I'm going to write main code. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do case, we're gonna do a case statement. So how we start that off is we start case state, and then I can do control space bar and it will automatically populate that variable in there, state motion of, and then go ahead and hit enter. So how, it, how it's gonna work is state motion, the variable state motion is gonna start off as, a val it's gonna be equal to a value of zero. So what we wanna do is we wanna put, that as our first thing that we're gonna do in this program. So we're gonna do zero colon, and then I'm gonna just say, we're gonna make a comment here. We're gonna just, this is gonna be our power axis on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an if statement within this. We're gonna say if MP and then control space bar. And then what I can do is MP axis basic underscore zero. And I'm gonna copy and paste this right here because we're gonna use this quite a bit. So control C, and then when you put a dot zero, we're gonna say enable, we want it to be enable. We're gonna do enable equals true and control V dot MP axis error. We don't want it to be an error equals false and Command busy, that's, we want it to be false as well. We don't, we want, that's another thing we want it to be. So control V dot command busy equals false and, and control V again dot active, 
we want this to be active equals true, then we're going to do control V, MPX is basic power. And we, what we're going to do is we're actually going to set this to true. So when you set a value, up here we're just comparing. We're just looking to see if, if these are these this statement here is true or false or whatever we're saying it is. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set this to true. So we're going to do a colon, whoops, colon, and an equal sign. And we're going to say true, and then a semicolon. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make state motion set to the next value. So we're going to do state and then control or space and control space, state motion, set that value to five. And then when you ever do an if statement, you always want to do end if. So end, whoops, end underscore if, semicolon, just like that. So now we make our five. Because now we're going to move on to the next part. And so five, what we're going to do is we're going to check, we're going to check to make sure we did power on. So just we'll make a comment there. Check for power. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say if M, whoops. MP access basic underscore zero dot power power on equals true, true, then state, we're gonna turn state motion, and we're gonna set that to the next value. So colon and an equal sign, and we'll do that to 10. And then go ahead and, and then do and if, And then you go back one space, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 10, colon. And then here, we're gonna home it. So home axis, just like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do M, I'll just do control V dot home. We're gonna set that to true, equals true. And then we're gonna go to state motion 15 or set it to state motion 15, just like that. Since we didn't do an if statement here, we can just go on right to the next one because we, we didn't, we didn't, we're not, we don't need to do an end if, there's no if there. Now we want to check and see if it's home. So 15 colon, and we'll say check if homed. And then we'll do if, MP access basic zero dot is homed equals true. And then what we want to do is then we'll set state motion, state motion to 20, 20. And we also, I'm gonna change MP access basic home back to false because we don't always need it to be constantly, when once you home it, you can unhome it or you can un, you just make it so it's false. So control V, set that equal to false. And then end the if statement. And here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a move absolute based on if sensor one or sensor two is true. So move absolute sensor one and sensor two. I'm gonna say if sensor one, so you can just get control space equals true and MP access basic zero, move active is false. We don't want it to be moving. Then we're gonna do axis parameters. So axis parameters 
dot move absolute or sorry position we're going to set the position equal to 38 that's an arbitrary number i'm just throwing it in there you're going to want to know what that how many revolutions that's going to be for whatever actuator or whatever you have it hooked up to but we're going to say move to position 38 if you go up to the top here we have that axis parameters position set to zero now i'm changing it to 38 right here so once you do that you hit the semicolon and then you can then we want to make sure we call the MP axis uh, move absolute. So control V dot move absolute. And we're going to set that to true. Set that equal to true. Semicolon. And then we can end the if statement right there, just like that. And then, so what I'm saying is if sensor one goes true and I'm not currently moving, move active is false then go ahead and set the axis parameters position to 38 and then go ahead and move it, do that move absolute and move to that position and then end that. And then I'm gonna say if sensor two equals true and MP axis basic dot move active equals false then we'll do axis parameters again dot position and we're gonna set that back to zero that's exactly where we started just like that and then we're gonna do the MP axis basic move absolute command again and we're gonna set that to true equals true and the if statement right there. So now we're saying if sensor two is true and MP axis basic move active is false, then go ahead and change that axis parameter position back to zero and then go ahead and move to that position. Now, one other thing I need to put in here is I always, if you notice move absolute is true, I need to make sure that I'm toggling that back to false as well. So it's not always sitting at true. So I'm gonna say one last if statement here. I'm gonna say if Sensor one equals false and sensor two equals false and MPX is basic in position. So am I in position equals true then what I want to do is I want to change MP axis basic move absolute back to false. So control V move absolute set that equal to false just like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to end underscore if and the if statement right there. And that's it. That's our logic right there. Now, one last thing, since we started the case statement, we have to end the case statement. If you don't do that, you're going to get in trouble. So let's go back one additional space and then do end case, end underscore case, just like that. And there you go. We've got our program written. This is how we do a basic case statement and structured text. Let's go ahead and build the project, transfer it down to our controller and see the actuator move. All right, guys, here we are at the workbench. I've got the BNR servo motor hooked up to a harmonic drive gearhead and that's hooked up to the PHD ESU actuator. I also have two six sensors as our inputs. If I block the first six sensor, you'll see that it moves one way. And if I block the other six sensor, you'll see it moves the other way. We can also monitor this in the watch window in our program in real time. So if you see right there, the sensor went true and it moved. Then the next sensor goes true and it moves. It's tied into what we're actually seeing in the program. We can also see our position. Notice our position right here just went to 37.5. That's what we programmed. If I go the other way, it goes to zero. All right, guys, that's all I had to show you this week. Thanks so much for watching. If you do like these videos, feel free to go ahead and hit subscribe. There's lots of other great content related to automation in those videos. Have a great weekend and please stay safe.